fish's call sheet. Uh, the use of a call sheet because it's the thing we look at every day. It's kind of my way of sharing the behind the scenes story and a view of uh, our entertainment industry and to celebrate the people who make amazing things possible. And Chance Chisoni is, for us, you're our craft service foreman. That's the official title. You, do you like that title or do you prefer something else? Well, they just call me crafty. This is the question, right? Everybody who's outside of our industry, kind of an idea, I think, of what they think craft service is. Your official job title is? Yeah, craft services. Craft services, technically, there's an S on both ends. Okay. Um, yeah, a four person is basically what it is. Now, what do people think craft services does? Uh, everyone thinks I'm a caterer. That's okay. what everyone thinks I am. Uh, I guess it's not a, a totally wrong assumption, uh, but it's definitely the one I get most of the time is they think that I'm a full blown caterer. What do you really do? Right. That's so the basically question. now. Sir, every show is a little different. It always changes. Um, I'm more of a provider, you know, it's like we make some stuff, we order some stuff, we make sure that you guys are taken care of throughout the day. We make sure there's always something healthy or not healthy, whatever, you know, whatever the mood is really of the person, you know, you try to have a different variety from just, a, for just about every walk of life and every, uh, dietary need, every, you know, every, uh, everybody you know it's like in in you know in, 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 in my perfect world is i have something for every single person on that set whether you're the the highest paid biggest uh name the person who's considered not the biggest name you know it's like i try to treat everybody with respect i try to make sure everyone's taken care of do i succeed always no, maybe not but you know efforts there but basically i'm a provider i'm a i'm a all day food provider i guess if you want to not put it into a nice little package and I think you're a master of that. I think you're a master, especially on our show, because we have so many like uh, vegan, uh, vegetarian, aquatarian. Um, I mean, however you can divide what you would eat and only eating part of some things and parts of others. And, you know, I like this snack and that snack. And then uh, certain times of the year, you know, you're the, the guy you go see if you want immunity boost or a special coffee or, you know, you can make things on the spot. Oh, yeah. And, and what I always say is like craft service, right? Yeah. When you walk to the craft service table, you're there because you need something. Sometimes it's comfort. Sometimes it's a pick-me-up. Sometimes it's fuel, whatever it is. And it makes such a huge difference to walk back there and to, one, see somebody that you like and respect, that you can joke with and play with and communicate, but also to know that you're going to have something that's going to give you whatever you need. I need a pick me up. I need a, I need something calming. I need something quick. I need something. I want to take a little time here, you know, like, and you, you always kind of have everything and people don't always, until you've had a bad craft service, you don't understand the masterful job that a great one does. Well, thank you, man. That means a lot. It really does. Yeah. I love it. I mean, I, I would tell you this year in particular, like just the multitude of, food and and you know between you and john and and laying out not just what we're eating but snacks in between and what's available dealing with all the different diets but then also providing variety within all of them yeah. and we've had every kind of food in the world you know i talked to jeremy armstrong who works in props and yeah. i'm like i'm like what's your favorite thing to see back there he goes oh man when i see thai food i get happy and it's so funny because everybody has that what? you know whether it be Italian food one day or Mediterranean food or, you know, and you just have this masterful way of kind of, it's not just throwing stuff out like people assume. You really have a, a game plan and an art to it and things balance each other. And Oh yeah. I, uh, I'm one of those people that really think about it a lot, you know, and I, uh, I pride myself on trying to make a menu that has harmony, trying to make sure that things don't just get thrown out there because I have a vegan, so give me whatever you got that's vegan. I don't care. You know what I mean? It's like, no, it's like I'm looking up stuff. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking up recipes. I'm looking up ideas. I'm looking up, you know, different restaurants, different this, different that. You know, it's like, you know, I, I me and John, I mean, John too, we, we put a lot, we put a lot of ourselves and effort into what we do. It's like, am I, do I spend too much money sometimes? Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm very guilty of that. But it's not because I'm trying to spend money. It's because I'm trying to make people happy. It's not because I'm just trying to, hey, just throw money at the problem. It's like, I put out food that I think people are going to love. So you know what ends up happening is people eat twice as much of it because 
if I have something, like let's say I put something out and nobody touches it, then it's not going back out again. I'm going to replace that item with something that everybody loves. Why continue to put something out if they're not going to eat it? So yeah, I, I tend to I tend to spend a little bit more than I should. It's it's probably my it's probably my biggest flaw is I really like to make people happy, and I don't know if you consider that a flaw or not, but it, it does tend to hurt the budget a little bit because I forget sometimes about how much something costs because I enjoy seeing people's face light up when they come back. That's well, one of the parts I really love. I would say I pray that that is the thing that we are most guilty of, right? Of making too many people happy. Yes. Oh. You know? And, and I think that's that's the thing for me is I don't think people realize unless you have a situation where it doesn't work right. When you get there first thing in the morning after you worked a really long day the day before, right? You worked a crazy schedule and you walk in and the food is great and your breakfast starts your day right. It starts that day right for everyone, oh. right? In the middle of a day, if you've had a bear of a day and you had technical problems or there's rewrites or there's confusion or, you know, stuff just you know, you have a tough scene and, and things are grinding, especially on a movie, right? You come back to lunch and lunch kind of resets you, revitalizes you. Food has that power. Food is a communicative and, and a completely social and interactive experience and people share it. So when you have good food, you share together. And I think that's part of it for me is, you know, and then, or at the end of a long day to be able to know that you're going to come back there and there's going to be something special. Right man, you, you come back there and it elevates what you get to do that day. And I think that's one of those things that people don't always, we don't always verbalize as well as we should. Right. What a difference that makes. Well, thank you. I mean, that does, that makes it all, it makes it all worth it. Cause I mean, I'll tell you, I'm one of those guys that when something doesn't go right, like it happens, it, it affects me. Like I, <laughs> my wife will be vouched for it. I'll come home with a hot, <laughs> screwed up. And, you know, I did what, something stupid. Like I ordered, I, I got the wrong, like uh, there was something that I ordered one time that was supposed to be vegan that wasn't vegan. I was, I was, I was messed up. <laughs> right. It bothered me. It, you know, it bothers me probably a little too much. I probably should learn a little bit better to, you know, let stuff like that that is really out of my control. And I've gotten better over the years, but let stuff like that just roll off my shoulder. You know, it just roll off me because there's nothing I can do. It's like it's not from lack. Like I said, it's all. It's never from lack of effort. You know, right. all of my mistakes are never because I'm not trying. It'd be at the menu that I make. If the menu sucks, then it wasn't because I just decided I wanted to make a crappy menu. It's because right. I made some mistakes, maybe went too far out on a ledge or, you know, whatever it is. But yeah, it's like, but it's nice to hear that, you know, it is noticed. I mean, it makes me, it makes you feel good. It makes you all the stressful things, all the times where you gotta, you know, you're, you're running out of ideas. Cause you know, it's like, that's the, that, that's the biggest thing. It's like, you start running out of ideas as these shows go on and on and on. Cause it's like, there's only so much you can show you guys. You know what I mean? Like there's only so much I can do. It, you know how it is in our business is you show up every day and you do the great work and then you get more opportunities. And when the opportunities come, you exactly what you said, you come with a hundred percent effort yeah. and pay sure. attention and bring everything you got. And if not here or not in this project or the project doesn't continue, then you got to go to the next one. All right. Now, how long have you been in the entertainment industry? Um, I started in 2003. Okay. Um, I wasn't in the union yet. I didn't get in the union until 2005, I believe. God, it feels like a decade or a, a lifetime ago, I should say. It was definitely a decade ago. Been doing it for 17 years. Been doing restaurant work. I've been. I was a bartender and a waiter for a lot of years before that. So I've basically been. I was waiting tables and doing construction. Actually, I was a painter for a while before all that. But yeah, I've been doing it for 17 years. What was your dream coming into the business? To be honest with you. When I was coming into the business, I, I I was unfortunately one of those people that was just stoked to have a, a great paying job. I mean, I scraped by for so many years. Probably, you know, I'm a low man on the totem pole. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not I'm not one of those people that you know you know. It's like I'm not up there. I I my my salary my my rate is lower than most of the other departments' lowest paid guys. You know what I mean? But it's still more than I could ever be. I, I'm so thankful for it. It's like, no matter what, I don't care. You know, yeah, I have to take out trash. Yes, I have to do things that I don't really necessarily enjoy doing, but you know what? I am so blessed. I'm able to provide for my family. And just, I was just coming into it with a, like, wow, I can't believe that they're going to pay me to do basically what I was doing for almost minimum wage, pay me a lot more. You know, it's like, so 
that's unfortunately that was the beginning of my career in the, in the entertainment industry because mine was more the 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 grind the you know the, the wheels that all right. stick together you know I'm one of the cogs <laughs> so yeah it was more it was more just trying to make a better life for myself I mean that was my motivation and that was the reason why I wanted to get into it oh, I get it I mean I've worked a lot of crew jobs I mean I've I've been in props and I've been in set dressing and I've designed and built sets and I. I was an electrician on certain things and I've been a camera operator. Yeah, it's funny because sometimes you, you just need a job to pay for your family and then you find a place where you have an a affinity or a niche or you, or you work real well right. and you come in with full effort and desire. But the one thing I'll tell you is you're not just a cog to me. Oh, thank you. I, I look forward to every day away from the work side of it, right? For my daughter being there, my family being there for us seeing you on a daily basis, especially you and John. Right. You make that day better. Oh, thanks. So you're as big a part of every day for those people on that set. So don't ever forget. That's awesome. Well, thank you. No, I appreciate it. I was, you know, I hope to be that to people. Like I, I do, I want it to be an experience. I don't want to just be, but I do it not because I want to put on a show. I do it because I just, I want to be a good person. Ultimately, no matter all the mistakes I've made, no matter all the things I do, I want to be a good person deep down. Am I always that person that I hold myself to? No, everyone falters and everyone, everyone has lulls and downsides. And, but ultimately, I want to be a good person and I try to give what you give in, or uh, get what you give in life. You know, it's like yeah. I, I'm a firm believer in that. So if I give positivity and, and, and uh, joy to people, then you know what? It comes back 10 times. So it's a blessing to me to be yeah. able to get, cause I get it back from you guys also. I mean, I mean the com we've had great conversations. You have a great family. I mean, God willing, I'll be back. You know what I mean? And I hope that's the case, but if not, then I was blessed to have been there for the, for that one season because it did make my life better, you know, cause everybody around me is, you know, yourself and all the, everybody was just so genuine. And I truly believe that everyone was really nice and genuine on that show. And they were very good people. Everybody on that show was a joy to be around, and they all, uh, you know, all treated me with respect. Because I'll tell you, there's been shows where I've been treated very, <laughs> very disrespectfully. You know what I mean? Like, because there are unfortunately a lot of people that don't look at me in the light that you do, which is another reason why I love that show so much. Because I don't, I don't feel lower than anyone on that show. Does that make sense? Oh, 100%. You know? I mean, and that's the thing. Having worked on all levels of this business. You know, I came in as a kid, right? And you come in as an actor. So a lot of times people ascribe a value or you're, you're just somewhere on a list that you initially start kind of high on a list. And sometimes easy for people to cater to you. I was lucky. I worked with a lot of crew people who looked at me and were like, no, you're a kid and you'll say please and you'll say thank you. And we're, we're going to make you be the right kind of person. And I love that because it was like having, you know, 100 aunts and uncles. I've watched other people along the way, having worked on the crew side of things. And so it made me very aware, you know, especially as I write and try to produce and do all these other pieces and put everything together. When I build a project from the moment you walk in to the moment you go home, I want it to be that authentic. I want it to be a collective collaborative environment with people who respect each other, with people who appreciate each other. And it doesn't matter where you are on the call sheet. It doesn't matter what department you work for, we're here to make something. Yeah. We're here to collaborate. And if somebody doesn't do their job, you know, then it doesn't work as well. You know, Jeremy used the word flow. And I thought that was a great example is things flow when we all do our job. Everybody shows up and is a pro, man. It, everything works better and things are better and you're happy. And, you know, and, and few it, things make people happy is good food. Oh. <laughs> But no, it, it, I think it does matter that everyone works together, regardless of what your job is or what you do. You know, it's like if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, then ultimately you're going to affect somebody else in that crew because then they're not going to be able to do what they're supposed to do. Or, you know, if I, it's, and it's the domino effect. And it, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, it, it'll go down the chain. Will the product get done? Probably, yeah. Uh, probably will, you know what I mean? But take a lot more steps and a lot more uh, frustration to get there when people are stepping on your toes or, putting you know roadblocks in front of you instead of you know helping you by doing their job 
let's say a grip doesn't set as flat. Well, then now you have shadows where they're not supposed to be shadows or light where they're supposed to be light. It's like, and that's something simple. It's like, yeah, the DP would see it most likely, but you know, it's like, it all goes down to like, it, it makes everybody's job harder. You know, it's like, it's like everything has, uh, what's, uh, consequence and reaction. Consequence. Thank you. Exactly. It's like, all of it means something down to like, when you come in for coffee and you, I don't have it ready for you. If it's, you know, if it's not ready, when you come in, well, guess what? You got to go to, you might be like really having a shitty morning. You need that cup of coffee. It's like the one thing, the whole drive in, you're thinking about, Oh God, I can't wait to get there to have a cup of coffee. And it's not there. And you got to go straight to set. Now you are in a bad mood as an actor. Not necessarily. This is just a, like me throwing stuff out there. But you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, I don't even like, drink coffee. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but I'm just saying, like, it's it's something no, as right. simple as not having your cup of coffee that I was supposed to supply you. Maybe I didn't do it because I was busy doing something else. Yes, okay, but it, it's just it's a it's it's a snowball effect, and it right. doesn't matter how little the one thing is. It's a snowball effect that turns it into a big thing by hour number six, hour number seven that you're there. Right. You know, hour number sixteen. Sometimes it's like, what's the best part of your job? Uh, honestly interacting with people like yourself to be honest with you i mean i love that part of my job i'm one of the few people that are blessed in this job to be able to interact with every single department almost every single level of the show to executives to i mean like obviously a little less with the executives we you know like you know to the executives to I mean, everybody. And it's like, and a lot of times I get to know these people and I get, you know, it's like, and sometimes you don't get to know them as well as you would like to, but it's like you, you form, I form a lot of great friendships with a lot of great people, you know, and it's, uh, I, I feel blessed because a lot of times like, you know, if you're, you're working as a grip, you don't get to, or an electrician or, you know, a construct, you know, a laborer or whatever. It's like, you're kind of just stuck with those people. You don't get to meet everybody. I'm that one department. And it's probably the thing I love the most where I talk to it everyone and i like to talk if you haven't noticed <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too. <laughs> what's the hardest part of your job and not so much on our show but it, ha it happens a lot it's the negativity it's the uh, mm -hmm. you know nothing can please certain people you know what i mean it's like because yeah. i'm the kind of guy that will is determined to please you know and make sure it's good and when i get that like negativity and that like and i've been on shows where it's like no matter what i did it's like They'll thank you with one hand and then say, oh, but you should have this, you know, or it's like yeah. not being happy with the, cause like you said, you did construction jobs. Did you get fed four times a day on construction jobs? No, Never, never. You know, that's the worst part of, I always joke cause people go, why are you so happy? Do you know what it's like to know that you have food where you're working? You know, when I work construction or when I worked in a warehouse, right? I get an hour lunch. But that hour lunch cost me an hour of my life because in order to go buy food or go and get something, I had to give up. If I didn't bring it myself or if I brought it myself, then it, that's time I got to prepare. And, you know, it's time I got to give up. It means I got to get up an hour earlier in the morning to make sure I have what I need throughout the day. So to have, for me to have somebody who consciously thinks of those things and knows what, not just what I would like, but what everybody would like. Man, it, it's so valuable. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really do. That makes me feel good. Uh, it, makes me, it makes me forget about the negativity. Okay. But here, because a lot of, I, I, fortunately, you know, I have been blessed with a lot of people like yourself that do really appreciate what I do. And it makes it, uh, it makes, it drowns out some of the negativity that you get and you have to deal with. I'm very blessed, you know, to, to be able to say that I can honestly, I, I, there have been m m many more people like yourself than there has been with the constant negativity. Uh, but yeah, so that would be my, my worst thing on set is that negativity. What was your first job in this business? Like, what was your first gig? Uh, well, my first official gig or the first time I worked on a set? Because my first official, well, okay, my first job ever, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. But I wasn't technically working on that show. But um, I had uh, one of my friends who did this, a friend of mine, uh, he was doing it. And there was another gentleman that was key in the show and uh, who got me in the end. Thanks a bunch to him for all he did. But I went in there and worked a full day just to see what it was all about. Cause my, my buddy was like, dude, you gotta, you gotta come check this out. You'd be great at it. You, you know, you really gotta come check this out. So I'm like, all right, well, you know, screw it. I was off. I wasn't working that day. It was, I was a waiter. So I had weird days off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. 
so I went on like a Wednesday or something like that and worked like a 12 hour day and I loved it. It was like, wow, this is awesome. But yeah, that was my first job. My, my first official time on a set was Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Okay. Now, what was your first, like, I'm hired to do something big on a production. What was the production? My first show where I got all my days and actually got into the union was Freaky Friday with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan. That was my first official i had done some work here and there and like got whatever kind of pa work or whatever i could do it uh you know up into that but my first job officially as craft service was uh freaky friday yeah and i i think it's hard for people sometimes outside of our business i mean for us we know it's all about trying to get the right number of days mm -hmm. in the right area so that you can get in to do what you want to do and i think that's something that people a lot of people who have worked union jobs can relate to, but I think a lot of people who maybe outside this business don't realize that could be a real challenge. So you get on two something like years. Freaky Friday. Two and a, uh, just about two and a half years it took me to get in uh, yeah. after my first day ever to the time where I actually had my days. In fact, I didn't, uh, yeah, I got all my days on that show. Uh, That's good. That's a great gig, right? That's what we call, you know, <laughs> winner, right? Oh, that was a winner. One downside of doing craft service your first year and getting all this free food is I gained uh, 50 pounds my first year in this business. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, being around food all the time and preparing stuff all the time, it's not hard to do. No. You know, and especially when you get to buy good food. Yeah, exactly. And that's the beauty. Like, I, I can't tell you how many people I know who, at the end of the day, take food home with them. Like, that's how good the food is. That people are taking food home. People are taking food home to their family everything kind of has a balance and nothing kind of goes to waste because it's valued. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. We, we, we pride ourselves on not waste and we really do like, that's why we have the to go box and we try to encourage people taking stuff that's left over instead of having to toss it, you know? And I know you went to great lengths this year to try and compost and to do, to do everything we could to maximize usage of everything. Oh, yeah, to, to not, to not waste. And, and that's also, you know, from the environmental side, such a, an appreciated thing. I mean, the to-go containers being biodegradable and like all of the, the little tiny details that people could overlook. Right. Man, to have as low an impact while feeding all of these people was really impressive. Well, thank you. Yeah, no, it definitely takes a little, it, it takes extra work, but it's worth it. And I want my kids to, I want my kids to have something to enjoy when they have, when my grandkids get here, you know, it's like, yeah. that's, you know, it's like, and it's simple things like that. If we could all get on board that might actually, the funny thing is I'm good at it. My mom does young Sheldon. She is even better. Like she's, she, I think she got an award from Warner Brothers this year for, uh, for doing, uh, for the amount of like recycling composting that she did. Like she yeah. was like the standard. In our house, we're, we're astonished by it because Isabel, started this environmental charity right so oh, wow. it's a big deal and something we talk about all the time so you opened her eyes even to new areas that she hadn't considered that had been environmental impacts right and so we had a lot of conversations on the way home that you generated oh wow yeah so it was That's great because cool. you know it really, it really kind of shaped things what's your most memorable project that you've worked on or a couple that that really stand out to you uh actually the first show i ever keyed is probably the one that uh and that was Flicka. that was the first four that was the first job i was ever in charge that was probably the most memorable one that one we did we actually uh and not it was a hard show it was difficult it was i mean we were in uh dirt at nine weeks we had one day on pavement you know what i mean like uh and it was in the summertime i mean it was just it was miserable it was a and miserable i don't think people not to cut in but people don't realize when you're in the dirt in the place things are dirty trying to keep the food clean, trying to keep everything sanitized, trying to make sure, and people like it or not, they get other things on their mind. So people come and they open things and leave things open or drop things and, you know, and you got to police all of that. Yeah. It's, it was a, cha it was a very challenging show, but I think just because it was my first show that I was able to do the job, you know what I mean? Like, so it was very, mem very memorable. Um, and it was met a lot of cool people, a lot of great people. I actually built my first truck very shortly after that show. Um, so that was, it was, that's probably the one that was most memorable. Have you ever gotten an opportunity to work with your mom? Uh, yeah, we worked together. We actually started Young Sheldon the first few episodes together. And then uh, 
she ended up being she was a grocery store manager for a lot of years um so she when she stepped into this business it was just like she's really good at what she does we've never done a full project together like we've only worked bits and pieces of projects uh it's uh and i've been the boss which is very weird <laughs> so that part gets a little um you know challenging you know when it comes down to trying to i actually worked honestly my dad was actually he's my stepdad but he was the one who raised me and my father he uh he's my business partner and i worked with him uh for like 10 years as my assistant he was my assistant for like my first 10 years of my career well, he, we was, I used to make jokes that I was punishing him for all the stuff he used to make me do. <laughs> Way back, right? <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, see what you made me clean my room, you bastard. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what are some of the career highlights for you? What are the things that you're like, man, I, I made that happen, or there was an event that ended up happening on set, or I had to pull something off short notice? Honestly, uh, birthday cakes are uh, I've had many birthday cakes that I've had to pull off that were like, hey, uh, we need a birthday cake in like an hour. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, I mean, it happened. It happened. It happens a lot with my job, especially not not so much actually multicam shows. But why why I love them so much is like they're very planned out, and you very you know you have a schedule and you can really plan ahead and do a lot. But a lot of the shows like movies and t uh, one hour episodics, it's like, it felt like we were trying to pull something off every day on those shows. You know, it's like you'd start asking, you know, you have to ask basically at like lunchtime, Hey, are we going to need a meal tonight? Are we going to need to do anything tonight? You know, it's like, you know, you, you get told no, cause nobody wants to spend any money. And then, Hey, uh, what can you get here in 45 minutes? It's like, wait for uh, 200 people. Not a whole hell of a lot. That's a, that's a tough one actually to answer because it felt like there was a, um, I mean, it felt like trying to pull off miracles all the time. Something that you didn't think you could do. And, you know, it's like, they don't give you any time to get it done, but they expect it. And if it's not good, God forbid, you know, it's like, then you get looked at negatively when you only got 45 minutes to try and pull it off. Well, I know um, we're working multi-camera, right? So our, our schedule is a little more manageable, a little yes. more coordinated. But then you go to a single camera show, you know, you hit one snag in a day, what was supposed to be an easy day could turn into a long night. Oh, yeah. And if you're told, hey, this is the budget and don't go over this and here's all we have for today. And all of a sudden, in an hour, we need food for 200 people. Yeah. The next thing you know is, like we talked about before, it can't just be any food for 200 people. It's got to oh. be something people want. And it's got to it's got to refuel those people to power them through a day they never planned on having. Oh, yeah, exactly. And if it's not, then you get the brunt of it you know it's yeah. like and then god forbid they tell you not and there's been other times where you get told not to get anything at all and then they literally keep going like no no, we're gonna be done in a minute no we're gonna be done in a minute and one hour goes by okay you sure we're gonna be done no we'll be done in a minute two hours go by next thing you know three hours go by and they still don't want to get any food and everyone looks at you like you just you know like you just ruin their whole life when in actuality you're just basically doing you can only do what you're told it's like but you know a lot of people look at you like you are the end all and be all and the say all and what you get to do it's like no there's all kinds of different things and reasons and you know that you can get something or you can't get something it's like uh you know i've been very blessed lately you know to be on shows that they have given me a lot of liberty and being able to really just take care of you guys and it's very much better that way i've been on the other end of the stick where it's like uh you know they don't want to give you anything but they still expect the world and you have to literally try and make magic out of you know that was, that like, mouse, yeah. yeah it's just crazy it's just crazy I, I used to joke when you work movies right especially when you work on the crew side of a movie mm -hmm. <laughs> the beginning of the movie most things are pretty good then you start getting about a third to a half way all of a sudden they decide hey wait a minute we've spent a lot of money here they start tightening everything up and all of a sudden you're like, Hey, wait a minute, what happened? Right. Then oh, you get, then you get past the halfway point and now they're like, we got to stretch every dollar to make it to the end. And craft service is one of those areas where they turn to you and they're like, Hey, about that uh, budget we gave you. It's like, oh, yeah. like it's now a quarter of what it used to be, but don't drop the quality. Right. And you go, yeah. it like, happens all the time. And you know, I, it's, it's disheartening. It's, it's disheartening, especially for somebody who really puts it all out there and tries to make it great, you know, tries to make it really tries to do what you guys want to be told that you can't. I've lost sleep over stuff like that. You know, like finding as cheap of food as you could possibly find and then try to turn it into something that is actually enjoyable. 
it's like it, it gets it gets taxing mentally more mentally taxing than ever because like i said there's people that just don't care that you have nothing to do with it and they'll treat you like shit they want what they want and they don't care why you don't have it and that's that that's goes to the negativity that's part of the things that we talked about earlier that what's an experience you've had on a set that you couldn't wait to go home and tell your loved ones about actually you know what's um one of the most, uh, I try, I really try not, to, I, I, I try to not get starstruck. I really do. And that's like, it's hard sometimes because there's all these people I grew up watching. I mean, I mean yourself and all the kids, all the cast from the Roseanne, that was tough for me to like, cause that show I, we watched every, we watched religiously when I was, when I was younger, but probably the one time where I had to go home and tell my wife, like I geeked out was, uh, actually when I was working on the ranch and I, I met Sam Elliott for the first time. Yeah. Um, and I was completely blown away and starstruck. And the the craziest part about it is he's probably one of the most genuinely kind and good-hearted individuals you'll ever meet in your life. It's like I tell people all the time. It's like if you didn't know who he was, you wouldn't know who he was. You know what I mean? Like he's not the kind of guy that throws his fame in your face. And it's like, dude, do you know who you are? It's like, and I geeked out. In fact, the people that I was working with were making fun of me. It's like, oh, you want you. You want to, you, we're you going to ask him out? What are you going to say? I was like, no, dude, shut up. <laughs> it's awesome when you meet somebody who is iconic and their kindness is the thing you remember, yes. right? Like, like their character is the thing you remember. Because I think in our business, you run into people. You're going to run into people because every set you go to is going to have somebody famous on it. But you run oh, into yeah. icons a lot. Oh, yeah. The ones that stick out the most are the ones who really are great, just great people. Yeah, hundred percent, and that—that's definitely the most memorable person I think I've ever, you know, moment I should say, you know. And there's been a few like that. Like, don't get me wrong, but that one because he's probably the, you know, he's oh shit, Sam Elliott. Amazing, yeah. <laughs> what else do you say? <laughs> yeah. What's one of the strangest things you've seen, or strangest things you've had to do on a set? What are oh, things where you're just like, really? I don't know. I guess I'm going to say it and hopefully I don't get in trouble for this one, but I was, work, I was, work, this was actually really funny. I don't know, but this one I'll always remember. So it was, it was reshoots and we were doing a show. It was a very tough shoot here. Uh, and she runs into the truck. She was very nice, very sweet actually to me. Um, she says, what are, what's, I, I need some, what do you have in here? You got chips? I need like beef jerky. What do you have that just has really like bad taste in like, what, what can I have that has a really, I, I just need something I can eat that is really bad tasting. I said, I don't know, I got beef jerky. I'm handing all this stuff, chips and beef jerky and like all this, like just whatever I could think of that was just like something that would just give a really bad breath. She goes, oh, because I have a, a, a makeout scene with them. I want to really mess them up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it was, that was probably the funniest and most, uh, that was very entertaining to me. And she went in there and, you know, I got to say him though, you know, I went in there to watch it because I wanted to see it. One of the most professional things i've ever seen from a person um you know he basically said mm, interesting <laughs> you know, this, never lost his composure and never uh didn't let it break his focus he actually just kept trucking on through it you That's know what I meant. it was like man what a what a great what a professional you know what i mean like because man the stuff she was eating was disgusting you know it's like oh <laughs> chips and jerky and just like nuts and you know like uh, you know just all kind just stuff that was going to bound to get stuck in your teeth you know it's like right. So yeah, I think that'd be it. Hopefully, I don't get in trouble for that one. No, so. I, we'll, we'll make sure you don't. <laughs> All right, Chance. What inspires you? Uh, what inspires me? Um, what inspires me is my family. I think my family inspires me. Inspires me to be better. You know, my past and my family inspire me to be better and be the best me I can be. And that's you know, uh, that's all I can ever try to be. Uh, it's a lot of rhyming, but not intentional. But yeah, it's, you know, I think, I think that's all you can ever strive for is, you know, do right by the people that do right by you. I, I agree with that. Yeah. I'm going to give you kind of my last run, right? So they don't have to be huge answers, but they're, right. some of them are deep questions. Yeah. So I just warn you ahead of time. All right. All right. You ready? Of the projects you've worked on, what's the one project that you wish you could go back and do now, knowing what you know now? Uh, flick on my first project because you were new is it because there's just things you do different or I mean, a lot harder than it needed to be you know okay. over time I, I learned easier ways to handle situations okay um, yeah so it didn't have to be I, I did what i needed to do and got it done but okay. it didn't need to be as hard as it was okay wow what was your first thing i catch you a little slack right 
I think so. I hope, yeah. But, you know, I don't think anybody else noticed it, but I, I know there's things I could have done that would have made it a lot easier on, on my crew, on my people, you know. Okay. What's the first thing you look at on a call sheet? The amount of people. Interesting, because that, that's how many people you got to take care of for the day. Yeah. Okay, so what's the last thing you want to see on a call sheet? A lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> huge, huge, like, uh, background and all kinds of people in a right. seat. Right? Actually, a lot of background is the last thing I want to see. Right, you, you, you don't want to see background, but just... yeah. a crowd of a thousand people. That's like your yeah. worst nightmare. Oh, that's, that's... that's what wakes Chance up in the middle of the night. Ooh, nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've been asking everybody, this is one of those things, so it's only fitting since you're at the beginning, you get to set the tone for this is, what's your favorite thing to see at craft service? Uh, nice people. Nice answer. Nice okay. people. Now, what's the one thing you hate to see at craft service? Well, that's an easy one because it's mean people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I left because Jeremy Armstrong said donuts. And I went, what's well, interesting? Really. And he goes, because now my whole day is ruined because now I don't know what I was thinking about, but all I can decide is which one am I not supposed to eat and which one am I going to? <laughs> so I was like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. How do you define success? Success to me is the ability to take care of the ones you love. They're, and as long as those people that you care mostly and deeply, most deeply about are taken care of and can live the life that is worthy of what you feel is worthy for them, uh, then that's success, you know, regardless of the amount of money in my bank or the amount of assets or things I have. If those people are taken care of, then I, I've done what I've set out to do. And how are you doing based on your definition of success? Uh, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm fairly successful, you know. Uh, uh, I, I think, I think my, my family is taken care of, and right now it's trying and taxing, you know, with all the things going on. Uh, and you know, it, it gets tough from day to day, you know, with all the drama and everything that you have in front of you. But I can, I know in my heart that my kids are, and my wife and my, you know, my family, I know in my heart that they don't have to go without the, the, the not, I wouldn't say the, not the finer things in life. Yeah, no, I can always, can't always give them the finer things in life. I'm not saying I can't, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, it's, uh, but they have what they need to be successful for themselves. So if I can help them to be successful, then that is a success to me. Well, I know from working with you, Chance, um, and all the times we talk about family, I think the two things I would say is we always have really candid conversations and your family is always present and on your mind and your focus and that you always come with full energy and full effort and full desire. So I think you're doing great. By your definition of success, I think you're absolutely succeeding. Good. So, and, and I'm thankful to get to be part of, uh, of this portion of your journey and, and to be able to share days with you. It's been re really good for me, really good for my family. So for us, you're, you guys, you and John both are, are a huge success for us. Cool. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm sure John does too. He's, I was actually just talking to him earlier. <laughs> I'm going to pick on, I'll pick on him sometime later. <laughs> yeah, right, he's so definitely going to get up on here. <laughs> <laughs> what is the one thing that you want on every set? joy joy and uh joy and understanding you know if, if that makes sense uh, joy, to have to have joy in your heart and understand when other people don't understand the meaning behind things like you know every, people are gonna have bad days you know what i mean like so if you come with joy you're gonna help them get through their bad day and when they don't have a bad day if you have joy and understanding well then guess what you can understand that they're having a bad day and you can still have that joy in your heart. All right. So what's the one thing you would eliminate from a set? Um, greed. Yeah, I agree. Greed is one thing I would, I would love to eliminate because unfortunately in our industry, there's a lot of greedy people out there. And it, it boils down to my level when people take more than what they actually need with the food, which makes me have to order more, which makes me have to do more. And it's not because I have to do more, but it's because other people have to go without. You know, that's the part that bothers me. And it's like, and it's, it's all, 99%, you know, I didn't say 90%, you know, a good, poor, a good majority of that is just for out of greed, you know, especially because when I go around and I throw away half eaten plates everywhere and people just take more than what they need. And it's all because of greed. And it's like, yeah. And, and it, I'm sure it's on all levels of this business. I'm sure it's, <laughs> I'm sure mine is just a minor, <laughs> and I know it's a minor 
you know, well, it's, it's a big thing. I remember being on a crew once and we came to the end of, it was like a 14 hour day and it was, it was uphill, uh, base camp versus where we were shooting was uphill. And we kept having to repost up and go up and down. And we had a shoot at the bottom and a shoot at the top and then a shoot at the bottom. It, it was bad planning. Oh, yeah. But you get to the end of the 14 hour day and you went to go eat something. And there was a group of people at the beginning who were high on the food chain who all took three or four plates. But by the time a lot of people who were in the crew who needed strength to go lift all those things got there, it was mostly gone. And I just felt sorry for everybody, right? Because it's a greed hurts. Yeah, it's heartless and greedy. I mean, it's, it's very sad. It's very sad, you know, because uh, it doesn't have to be like that. You know, it's like, you know, I, I, you know I've, I've witnessed so many disgustingly greedy people when it comes to what I do. You know, it's like taking a box for now and a box for later. It's like, I really need that right now. Like, I'm not saying nothing. Come back later. Maybe there's some left over. Take as much as you want. But I wish more people could actually look at this and go, you know what? I'm just going to take what I need right now. And then if there's more that I want later, I'll take it. You know, it's like, but they want to get, everyone wants to get theirs, get theirs, get theirs. It's, the, it's unfortunate, but it boils down to the whole dynamic of almost this country. It's like the country itself. When you go to the grocery stores nowadays, you know, it's like you go there right now. Everyone's taking more than what they need because they want to make sure they get theirs. Right. You know what I mean? And it's, 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 uh, it's sad. Yeah. It's, and, it, and it's hard because, you know, there's families who really need, yeah. don't have because people overtook stuff. Right. And, and I, I get the fear, but also at this time, you got to be responsible. Yeah. So if everyone just stopped being greedy, everyone will yeah. do what they needed. <laughs> What's the best gift you've gotten on a project? Um, friendship. Uh, <laughs> oh, what a brilliant answer. Uh, I mean, it's true though. I mean, the best gift I've gotten is friendship. I mean, honestly, our friendship, I, I appreciate, I mean, that's one of the things that I, that was a great gift. You know, it's like, I try not to pay too much attention. I mean, there's, yeah, there's great cool stuff that people give me, but you know what? I've made a lot of everlasting friendships and you know what? Those are more valuable to me than any asset or any, any item that I've ever gotten, you know, and I've me gotten too. pretty cool stuff, you know, like, but. Me too. And, and that's why, that's why I wanted to do this. I want to celebrate the good people and the the things that people don't always get to appreciate that I feel like are important. Yeah, actually, what's your most memorable experience on a set? You know, it's it's hard. I have so many because for me, it's my whole childhood. Right. It literally is the beginning moments. Um, one of the first ones I remember is when I first started. I was really young. I was six, and I wanted so badly to know the crew and to be with the cool guys, right? You know, as a kid, you want to be with the cool guys and they would go out and throw the football and play catch and do all these things. They're like, yeah, okay, you can play, right? And you're like a little kid, like you just got the coolest people in the world said, yes, you can play. They're throwing a football. We decided to do a flea flicker. It's two hand touch. And I'm thinking, sweet, a flea flicker. What is that? <laughs> right? I didn't know anything. So the, so the guy goes, okay, we're going to trick everybody. You hand me the ball, then I'm going to flip it back to you and you throw it to me. I'm going to end up throwing and that's not what they expected. Right. So we hike the ball, gives it back and I go to throw and a crew guy comes in, two hand touches me and I went flying. I mean, fly and shredded my whole back. I mean like just road rash my whole back. Now everybody thinks somebody's getting fired. Right. I'll never forget. I'm crying. And literally as soon as I hit the ground, I'm bloody. My white t-shirt is shredded and I, I'm crying and that, of course, is the moment that the ADs come out and say, hey, we're back in two minutes. Everybody come back inside, right? They're mortified. And they go back inside. And I went upstairs to my dressing room and jumped. I had a shower. So I jumped in the shower. And then I took paper towels and put them all over my, like, exposed back. Put it, And then I put my wardrobe on over it so it wouldn't, like, bleed onto the wardrobe. Oh, wow. And I was so determined not to let anybody know I was hurt, except it was a scene like it's right at the beginning of the very beginning of the show, and I choke on food, and John Goodman whacks me on the back. So in the scene, everybody knows I'm about to get hit in the back. Everybody knows I'm shredded, right? So we, we go to start the scene, and I, I can already hear the crew guys like, well, he hasn't said anything yet. What's going to happen? And at that time, I didn't really know the crew very well because I just started, and everybody's like, uh-oh, what's, what's going to happen here? So the scene starts, and every time John hit me on the back, it was just like, it was like squish, 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 squish. It was awful. Oh. 
but I'll never forget, we did the whole scene. So she helped me take off the outer layer of my wardrobe. My whole t-shirt was like bloody. I went upstairs and my set sitter who brought me to work had to help me peel off because I never thought about it. But the stuff was stuck to me now, right? But it was the greatest experience of my life chance, right? Because from that moment on, I had a hundred uncles who were going to go to bat for me and go to war for me and wanted to teach me everything because yeah. I had stayed strong for them. Nine years of broken windows where I had to take the blame and ended up washing cars to pay for them and so that other people wouldn't get fired and all these things. But I think that moment was one of the greatest moments because it showed them that they mattered to me and that I was willing to stand in there. But it also meant that they could play with me and push me and, and we could have a real relationship, a real friendship. That's awesome. That's, that was really awesome. Like, I, it's not awesome that you fell on yourself, but you know what I mean? Right. Like that. No, I, and I loved it. I, like to, to this day, I was like, that's one of those memories where you're like, it was such a bad moment at the time. And I just remember walking downstairs thinking, oh no, John's going to hit me on the back. Like I, like I hadn't thought it all out, right? See, that makes me want to look up that episode. <laughs> yeah, it's right at the beginning. So I, I think it's like episode three or four. Of the I actual like, series? Yeah. Oh, wow. Because I, I hadn't been working very long, and I was a young kid. But I was so small, the guy just barely touched me, but I didn't weigh anything, right? <laughs> so right. I just went flying. He was probably mortified, too. He probably oh. was like, yeah. I mean, oh, we had, we had some you, great though. electricians, a great group of grips. That, you, know, you know, some of those guys that I still talk to now, 30 – I don't know, 34 years later. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, a, that's such a great story. That was, I'm, I, thank you for sharing that with me. Thank you. Thank you for I'm being good. a part of this. I'm right. my, honestly, I, 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 honestly, when you, I was, I, I'm glad I did it too. Cause I'm not gonna lie. When you first brought it to my attention, it's like, I was thinking you were going to do it like, <laughs> like <laughs> at some time from now. And then when you're like, Oh, well, how about tomorrow? I'm like, Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 I'm like, all right, well, I guess, you know, no time like the present, but you know what? You, you made it like I it didn't. It didn't feel like an interview. It just felt like talking to an old friend. You know what I mean? Like it just felt like catching up. To be honest yeah. with you, and, and and that was I love it because because I, I like catching up, and it gives me opportunity yeah. to ask you things. I'm so fascinated because when you work with good people, you want to learn from them, and we don't always, when we're working, get the chance to ask some of these deep questions because oh, yeah. there's a million other people around, and 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 there's people asking you for stuff and, and asking me for stuff. And thank you. Thank you for oh, doing that. You're welcome. Honestly, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't be happier to help. And if I, hopefully, I, hopefully I did a good job or, you know, I just spoke from the heart. That's all I really did. So hopefully it works out. <laughs> okay. Last two, you ready? Yep. Okay. How do you want the people who worked with you to remember? You? I would like to be considered fair, you know, cause no, I'm not always going to give people what they want and no, they're not always going to get, what they feel they deserve, but I would like to be fair. And like I said, I'm human. Sometimes I screw up. Again, it's never from lack of effort. I always want, I always try to be fair. And that's how I want to be remembered as somebody who's fair. Well, you've been fair to us, more than fair. What's the one thing you always want to see at craft service? Chance. No. Um, I love oh, chance. I love chance too. I got to say when it comes to chance, I never had tried cold brew coffee in my life, and he may be addicted to it with his little uh, on tap cold brew coffee. Other than that, I don't know. Chance always has a lot of good things at craft service. Recently, I'm gonna say um, cold brew. That's something that <laughs> I love seeing cold brew because it's something that's kind of just recently started being served at craft service, and I and I kind of discovered it cold. cold yeah cold brew and oat milk, which is a great combination. But I'm also going to say, especially on the Connors show, I like to not only see at craft service, but I like to hear the music that Chance is playing at craft service. Yes. And I like to see my friend Amy Brown dancing around with her bowl of whatever she's eating. That's what I like to see. I like to come in and see people having fun, dancing, listening to music, and hanging out at craft service. It's one of the highlights for me of a right? day is when everybody's back there and being joyful. And, okay. and the, music, the music always changes, right? Sometimes it's Frank Sinatra and sometimes it's Led Zeppelin. It just kind of, it's just his, whatever his mood is, but it's, it's, there's always people back there dancing and hanging out and, 
and bonding before the, the work begins. Yeah, listen, honestly, our crafty on the Connors is one of the best. What's your legacy? What is it with your family, your loved ones, that you want them to take from your life? What I would like my my kids and my uh, especially my my my, my kids, uh, but also my family. What I would love for them to take from my life is never give up. You know, strive to be better than you you are. You know, strive to you know put your best foot forward and give everything you have in every situation, and good things will happen. You know, it's like. I was a poor kid from San Fernando, you know what I mean? And no, I'm not wealthy, no, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not, but you know what? I've come a long way, and it's all from, all from just determination, and all from, I've had help from people that, you know, set me up with this, or set me up with that, you know, like, and pushed, you know, but it was all done because I put out the effort, and I, you know, and I wasn't afraid to put myself out there either, you know? I wasn't afraid, I wasn't afraid to swing and miss, you know, like, <laughs> Oh, coach, yeah. that's that's everything, right? Yeah. Being willing to swing and miss, I think, is one of those things. I talk about this a lot with my kids because we're all so competitive and they want to be, they're so driven, right? But I think there's this thing of knowing that you can't make them all perfect, not being afraid to take your shot, not being afraid to take your chance, and not being afraid of a moment of failure that teaches you something great. Yeah. I think that if I had to pass anything along, that's what it would be. That's awesome. So, Chance, thank you. Thank oh, you for pleasure. participating. Thanks for coming on the call sheet. Thanks for kind of running down every aspect of, of what you do with craft services. My pleasure. If you'd like to be updated on Fish's call sheet, go ahead and subscribe or hit the bell below so you know right when we update new information.